Oh my goodness! My first time hosting with a TechLink shirt? Nick, can people buy these or what? Yeah, they can, and if you're in Europe, we have cheaper shipping now! Cheaper shipping for Europeans? Oh, we love those guys! <laughs> Get one! <laughs> Nvidia has stubbornly refused to change the name of their GTX 16 series and instead went and released another card in the lineup. Disgusting. But it turns out the GTX 1660 isn't disgusting. It's actually a pretty decent mid-range card for 220 bucks. Nvidia isn't releasing a reference version of the card, but there are a broad range of models from EVGA, MSI, you know, the usual suspects. Most of the reviews seem to be saying it's a decent successor to the six gig version of the GTX 1060. In fact, almost everyone is saying it's got optimal performance and power efficiency for its price range. And that, to me, is disgusting. We need to hold Nvidia accountable for this travesty. I'm almost getting used to it and I don't want to be used to the 16 series. Valve's Steam Link game streaming service has been around for a few years and it's amassed enough experience points to evolve to Steam Link Anywhere. It's higher form. You guys get this a Pokemon. Steam Link Anywhere will let you stream Steam games, or as I call it, stream. Because if you put Steam together and Steam and stream together, it's stream. So you can stream from a PC to almost any device that has an internet connection. Except iOS devices, because Apple doesn't like you. Previously, you were only able to stream from device to device on the same network. Now, you can play games on a computer at someone else's house or on your work PC. Just make sure your cubicle walls are high. And you can stream to Android using the Steam Link app on Wi-Fi or data. So just make sure you got an unlimited data plan and a good signal or you're gonna have a, a bad time. The news comes just as the Epic Game Store was accused of pilfering its users' Steam profile information. So it's a plus one for Valve in the battle of the game stores. You gonna stream games on the bus, Nick? I mean, if they had good games like Apex Legends and Fortnite, I might. I don't think that's gonna work. You're gonna play a competitive FPS on a streaming connection? Yeah. Come on, Nick! Good gravy! Where's James? And yesterday, Elon Musk took the wraps off Tesla's fourth mass-produced vehicle, the Model Y, at a short event in Hawthorne, California. It's actually just a prototype for now, but the idea is that it's sort of like a SUV version of the Model 3. And we're not gonna pre-order it, right? You're the worst. A 300 mile long range version will start production in fall 2020 and retail for $47,000, while the 230 mile Model Y will cost 37,000 and come out in spring 2021. It's got a panoramic glass roof like the company's other SUV, the Model X, but Elon Musk remarked during the event that he'll be able to basically do anything by the end of this year just with software upgrades. So who knows? Maybe the roof will turn into a convertible or something. We'll have to see. <laughs> the reveal of the Model Y completes Elon Musk's middle schooler ambition of having the names of his cars spell out sexy with a three. We all share in your pride, Elon. Very cool. Good job. Nice one. Now, if only you wouldn't tank the stock every time you tried to smoke marijuana. Yeah. No, that doesn't help. Stop with the tweets. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Honey, the free shopping tool that finds you the best promo codes whenever you shop online. A free browser extension that saves me money? Huh, sounds like bologna. That's right, delicious, delicious bologna sausage. Because those of you who downloaded Honey from our link have already saved over $100,000 in the past few months. Add it to Chrome, Firefox, or Safari, and save yourself time and money at over 30,000 online stores, including Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, Walmart, and more. So get Honey for free right now at joinhoney.com slash techlinked. There's literally no reason not to. Apple has had a rough time recently with Qualcomm, who got some models of iPhones banned from sale in Germany and China. Well, a US federal judge just ruled that Qualcomm owes Apple nearly 1 billion in patent royalty rebates. So that's gotta be nice for them to hear, until they hear that Spotify is filing an antitrust complaint against them in the EU, and that they actually have to pay Qualcomm 31 million for violating their patents. <sighs> Apple and Qualcomm, the couple that love to hate each other. Why do you guys just make out and get it over with, huh? Microsoft continues its streak of big moves with the announcement of Xbox Live on iOS and Android. The service will actually be part of a family of tools and services called Microsoft Game Stack, which includes Xbox Live, DirectX, Azure Cloud Servers, and more. The company will talk more about their multi-platform plans at GDC next week, where we'll probably also hear more about Project X Cloud Streaming and maybe Xbox Game Pass on multiple devices. 
Dang, Microsoft. I hope you're not just building our hopes up for nothing. I hope you wouldn't do us like that. Oh, you think ray tracing only works on NVIDIA RTX graphics cards? Wrong. Let me show you something. Crytek published a video of their new real-time graphics demo featuring ray traced reflections, and it's running on an AMD RX Vega 56. It's probably not an indication that we'll see games with ray tracing running on the average person's GPU anytime soon, but it's cool. Google has released the developer beta for the next version of Android codenamed Q. It brings with it greater privacy options and support for foldable devices, but it also has a desktop mode, sort of like Samsung's DeX feature. If you've got a Pixel device, you can download it, although I wouldn't recommend doing that on your main phone. It's a beta. And also, we don't know what Q stands for yet. And passengers parking their cars in the long-term lot at France's Lyon Saint Exupéry Airport this week, that's probably not how you say it, are in for a futuristic treat. Robot valets that will take your car to a long-term lot during your trip and retrieve it for you when you return. The robots are made by Stanley Robotics and will also be tested at London's Gatwick Airport later this year. Normally I'd feel weird about a robot taking my car, but these guys have little faces on the front which makes me feel like a character from Thomas the Train Engine is taking my car away, and that doesn't make me feel weird at all. The only thing I'd feel weird about is continuing this episode any further, so I'm gonna end it right now. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to TechLinked if you like or want tech news, and if you don't, I've said this before, how did you get to this point? Are you just trying to waste, are you just trying to waste time in your day? It doesn't make any sense. <sighs> ah! Wow, unexpected.